we are doing the last bit of objective three far as partial differentiation is concerned and the objective is to find the location and type of stationary point and we're doing that with an example that is already written here on the whiteboard we have find the location and the type of stationary point of a function z which is equal to x squared plus y squared plus 3x plus 2. So there are two things that we are going to combine in this question. We are first getting the location and we are getting the type of that location, type of that stationary point. So to get the location, we need to remember from ordinary differentiation that the gradient function dy over dx at a turning point is equal to zero. So we're going to apply the same knowledge in answering this question. So quickly, let us get the solution. To get the location, first of all, we get partial derivative of z with respect to x, which is partial derivative with respect to x of z is x squared plus y squared plus 3x plus 2 and we are going to get if you partially differentiate here partial derivative with respect to x of x squared is 2x partial derivative with respect to x of y squared is 0 partial derivative with respect to x of 3x is 3 and partial derivative with respect to x of 2 is 0 so partial derivative of z with respect to x gives us 2x plus 3 because this is a turning point and this is the gradient function of z with respect to x partially at that turning point then this gradient function should be equated to 0 so partial derivative with respect to x should be equal to 0 at that turning point which is equal to 2x plus 3 you obtain an equation in x because it's one equation and one unknown from which we can work out and see that x is equal to negative 3 halves which is negative 1.5 you also do the same for y get partial derivative of z with respect to y is equal to partial derivative with respect to y of z which is x squared plus y squared plus 3x plus 2y is supposed to be y there so we close the brackets and do that partial derivative partial derivative with respect to y of x squared x squared is a constant gives us zero partial derivative with respect to y of y squared gives us 2y partial derivative with respect to y of 3x x is a constant that gives us zero partial derivative of y with respect to of z with respect to y of 2y gives us positive 2 because this is the gradient function and we are talking about that gradient at a turning point then partial derivative of z with respect to y is equal to 0 at a turning point so this one is equal to 2y plus 2 and if you work this one out because it's a single equation in one unknown then you can make where the subject and see that y is equal to negative 1 so the x value and the y value of that function at the turning point is x is equal to negative 1.5 and y is equal to negative 1 you can put this one highlighted for ease of reference so you can have this one as that now the next thing we are going to do is get the second partial derivative of z with respect to x so we have second partial derivative of z with respect to x is equal to partial derivative with respect to x of partial derivative of z respect to x this gives us partial derivative with respect to x of that first function is 2x 
plus 3. And this gives us 2, positive 2. Then we also get second partial derivative of z with respect to y. This is partial derivative with respect to y of partial derivative of z with respect to y which is equal to partial derivative with respect to y of partial derivative of z with respect to y is 2y plus 2. And this gives us partial derivative of that function is positive 2 also. We have obtained second partial derivative of z with respect to x, second partial derivative of z with respect to y. Now we are going to get second partial derivative of z first with respect to x then with respect to y so this is equal to partial derivative with respect to y of partial derivative of z with respect to x which is partial derivative with respect to y partial derivative of z with respect to x we have obtained this one in the first equation here so we get 2x plus 3 because there is no y in either of these terms, that second partial derivative gives us zero. We obtained second partial derivative with respect to x, second partial derivative with respect to y, and we are going to substitute that one into the determinant of the Hessian. We have that is equal to second partial derivative of z with respect to x, multiplied by second partial derivative of z with respect to y we subtract partial derivative of z with respect to x then with respect to y then we square that our objective here is to substitute them so we have that determinant of the hessian is we have obtained this one and that is equal to 2 we multiply by we have obtained that one and it's equal to 2. We are subtracting second partial derivative of z with respect to y then with respect to x is 0. We square that and the result here is 4, which is positive. You can write it properly here as positive 4. Now, we need to check two things here. We need to get this partial derivative with respect to x we need it because it is required here then we have second partial derivative with respect to y we need it here then we have obtained this one here we needed it here we have substituted and we get that determinant of the hessian is positive 4 which means it is greater than 0. We look at our previous lesson and observe a few things here and there. If that determinant is greater than 0 and second partial derivative of z with respect to x squared is equal to 0 also then that kind of turning point is a minimum. This is minimum. So which is the point? We have found the location and we have identified what type it is. What is the location? We have there is a turning point at a point P which is negative 3 over 2. That is the x coordinate. Y coordinate is negative 1. And when you substitute x and y into the relationship you are likely to get the value of z so we substitute negative 3 half there square we substitute negative 1 there we square we add 3 into negative 3 half there then we have 2 into negative 1 when you work that one out to get negative negative 1.5 negative 1.5 no, negative 3.75 negative 3.25 so we have obtained the turning point, its location. X value is negative 3 half, Y value is negative 1, and the Z value is negative 3.25. That is the location of the turning point. What type of turning point is it? Because that determines...
determinant of the Hessian is greater than zero and the second partial derivative of z with respect to x is greater than zero, it's greater than zero here, then that kind of turning point is a minimum. Therefore, the point P, negative three halves, negative one, negative 3.25 is a minimum. That is how we do the question. What have we done? We have identified the location of the turning point. The location is negative 3 halves, negative 1, negative 3.25. And the type of turning point, what is it? We have done these calculations here and we have observed that that determinant of the Hessian is greater than zero. At the same time, second partial derivative of z with respect to x is also greater than zero. Both of them are greater than zero. And such kind of a turning point, we have identified it as a minimum point. That is what you're supposed to do to answer such a question. If this one was less than zero and this is greater than zero, then that would have been a maximum point. If this would have been less than zero, then that would have been a point of inflection. And if this one was to be zero, then we'd have done a few other things to, to check whether that turning point is a minimum, maximum, or a point of inflection. In future lessons, perhaps we'll do an example where the turning point is a maximum or the turning point is a point of inflection and check whether these details have been understood for you. Let's meet in that next lesson. Then we are going to look at applications of partial differentiation in real life situations like getting small changes. Meet me there and I'm looking forward to seeing you in that lesson. Thank you very much.